We're going to talk a little bit about health this morning because The Health Delusion is the name of the book which is out at the moment. Basically, the way things are at the moment, there are, if you go into any bookshop anywhere, there's books about diets, there's books about supplements, there's books about running, we've done all of them on this show, health supplements, what to do, all this information bombarding you. And yet, illnesses are going up, cancer rates are going up, unhealthy living, obesity, all these things are going up. And more than anything else, when you open your papers on a daily basis, you see the opposite of what you read yesterday. Yesterday. So try and make a bit of sense of this. Aidan Goggins has written uh, The Health Delusion and joins us now. Aidan, good Brilliant, morning. Mom. How are you today? Is this not just another book to add to the list of books on the shelf as I go in that I'm going to pick down another book, try and change my life and fail miserably? No, this, this book is different to the other books because we tackle this issue of this 21st century paradox that you just mentioned. It's the more we advance our society, the unhealthier we become. Um, I mean, it's, sh it's shocking now today, but the fact is, it's now the norm to be unhealthy. If you are healthy, you're actually in the minority. And what's so baffling about this is, as you, uh, you mentioned yourself, people are actually more interested in health than ever before. So it's not a lack of so interest how, or complacency on every behalf. How can it be happening? The fact is, the information we've been getting, we have to take a step back, look at it, and reevaluate it. And when we do this, we realise a lot of it just doesn't add up at all. Is that not too much for the normal person to take on board? I mean, you, I've just talked this morning about just one, the very, I knew I was talking to you this morning, I opened my paper on the first page of my paper. Um, previously, they've always said, if you're feeling a bit down, get some exercise. Yeah. I opened the paper to say, no, that's nonsense. You don't know, <laughs> you don't know where to stand, how, where to go to, what to believe in. Yeah, see, what your problem is, you've got people reporting on science trying to make headlines and they might actually not be the best people to be evaluating the papers that have been published. So I can assure you that um, exercise is very good for you and uh, if you're ever feeling down, go, go away and exercise. The problem is, and this is why we actually wrote the book because I've done pharmacy. Yeah, why, why, did, why did you write? We don't, I've done pharmacy, I've always had an interest in nutrition but you don't get much nutrition background if you do pharmacy or medicine, yeah. that's a sad fact. And um, so I've done a master's in nutrition medicine in the UK. So we're over there, we have the top experts in the fields lecturing to us on their findings. And it was like astonishing and perturbing to realize that, that the messages that they were telling us were the polar opposite quite often of the messages we hear trumpeted in the public. Right. So we're just, we don't have a chance when we're being fed the wrong advice. Even if you want good health, you just can't get it. So is this book something I can kind of use as a roadmap? And will it go through the big things? Say for instance, and the biggest selling books are still to this day diet books. Have you, have you taken a look at that world? We've taken a look at diets and we've shown them for what they are and sim quite simply, diets don't work. The diet industry, to be frank, is actually increasing. It's one of the contributors to the rates of obesity. Great. As long as we diet, our rates of obesity will only increase. And okay. this is explained through the book. Um, the other world, exercise, running side and side with that. We've had Ruth Fields on the show trying to get me off my arse and, and run. It didn't oh, work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, ho hopefully when run, you have a look to our... Presenter, run, didn't work. <laughs> Hopefully when you have a look through ours, you'll find it'll be more, it'll be, be more convincing than for you. Exercise is actually the only way that we can lose weight. I mean, what we have to do is look back 50 years ago when yeah. we didn't have this disease burden, when childhood diabetes wasn't an emerging epidemic, when 67% of the population weren't overweight or, or obese, yeah. when one in three people didn't have heart disease. And when you look back and you say, what, what, what's changed, what's different? And when you look at it in the likes of diets, what diets always do is restrict calories. Yeah. No matter what they say, whether it's the Atkins or the Sohn or this new one, the Jukin diet, and they say you can eat what you want. It's just, it's just a marketing ploy. It's right. all about reducing calories. Okay. But the fact is, our calorie intake hasn't changed over 50 years. Has it not? No matter what people tell you. That's very hard to believe. I know, it's astonishing. And, what, and the fact is, it's astonishing to believe, and we, didn't believe, we actually didn't believe it initially when we wrote it. We found st studies from the UK, and they said, Dietary calorie intake has, has actually reduced 20% since the 1970s. And we said, okay, well, that's nonsense. So, I mean, it can't make sense. So we went to the U.S. studies, the same. Yeah. Hadn't reduced, but they were, just, they were the same over so the last 30 it? years. China used to be the leanest population 20 years ago. Their calorie intake has actually decreased in the last 20 years, yeah. but they now contribute one-fifth of the so world. So where's the weight coming from? It's all down to our physical activity levels. 
with our technology and our advancing civilization, everything's making things easier in life. So we don't actually have to use the same amount of energy exertion. I mean, just think about our day. We have the lifts, we have cars, we don't cycle anymore. You know, when we come home, it's TV, it's our physical act it's our yeah. leisure time, sedentary activity. I mean, the, the statistics from the UK government office are, in the last 50 years, the difference in our physical activity yeah. levels between today and 50 years ago yeah. were the equivalent of running one whole marathon a week. In no, you're joking terms. me. One full marathon, just in the day-to-day -day things, yeah. walking through the shop, pushing the trolleys, doing the wa washing the old style. That's one full marathon a week. And I can assure all your listeners out there, if they run one full marathon a week, they you wouldn't be overweight. Me, they won't be coming to me with weight issues. You wouldn't have heart disease. Now, uh, you wouldn't yeah. be diabetic. Exactly, and all the things that come out. And we're, and we're not saying they come out, go out and run a marathon. No one's going to do that. What we're saying is it's the day-to-day -day things that you just need to increase your physical right. activity levels in. I was kind of saying to the beginning of this that, that um, I have a sense that when we look through this, and the, the health solution in my hands now, how to achieve exceptional health in the 21st century, uh, that it's going to come down to common sense. Exactly. Uh, an awful lot of this is going to be just stuff that you know in your heart if you're sitting down in front of a a meal that has 4,000 calories in you, it isn't doing you any good. If you haven't gotten off your arse for the last three weeks, that isn't doing you any good either. It's it's just common sense, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, there is there is some issues with some of the ice that's being disseminated that yeah. does go against the grain, such as the issue with saturated fats, where there is actually no evidence that they cause heart disease. And in fact, government policies replace saturated fat with carbohydrates, and especially the refined type of carbohydrates that we eat today, yeah. it's actually it's actually what's increasing our heart disease problems. And this has been shown in every single scientific paper over the last few years, but yet it's still not being addressed. Yeah. And what about our, our sugar content? There's one thing for you now. Um, yeah. This has become the latest fascination in our house, I don't know about yours, but the amount of sugar in, in breakfast cereals for children, uh, very often that can be up to eight spoonfuls in a serving. Exactly. Is that not killing them? It is. It's absolutely, you know, sugar is one of the worst things we could be taking. I mean, people people associate sugar and they think maybe diabetes and maybe obesity, that's the extent of it. But sugar is actually the number one contributor to heart disease. Um, and the big problem with sugar is, is what we associate it with. So we always associate it with confectionery or beverages. Yeah. And now, more recently, with the cereals. Yeah. But what we don't realize is a lot of the staples that we get recommended. So you're roasted and your baked potatoes are extremely high in sugar. Right. Your rice is extremely high in sugar, the white pasta is extremely high in sugar, the breads, all these foods that we wouldn't associate as being junk so, food. But what's just, just, you know, you're saying, the, it seems to me that if you were to boil this down, it really is coming down to the exercise thing that's changed out of recognition over the past 50 years. What would your advice be for people? Yeah, so, I mean, our advice is stop trying to look for the easy way out. Stop trying when it comes to consuming more pharmaceutical pills, going on more fad diets, or looking for more supp wonder supplements, you know, that's advocated by the industry, the answers aren't there. The profits are there, but the answers to your health aren't there. It's all about getting back in balance with nature. So what we're saying is, eat a good diet with, with the recommended plants and types yeah. that we recommend. You do need certain supplements, and there is, there is need of recognition of the supplements you need to take, like the selenium, which most people probably haven't heard about. No, I've never heard of it. It's essential for Star health. Trek. <laughs> it sounds like it, but we like selenium, and we, and we only intake half an ounce as much as we should be. Yeah. And it's essential for cancer, inflammatory disease, thyroid, and fertility. You know, all these all right. diseases can be dramatically reduced. You really, you really are the Richard Dawkins of the health world, aren't you? Like, <laughs> you chose the name of this book very carefully. <laughs> yeah. Don't believe the hype. Uh, the Health Delusion, How to Achieve Exceptional Health in the 21st Century. Uh, Glenn Matten and Aidan Goggins together. That's uh, great. I have to say that, that, um, that is an absolutely startling fact about the amount of exercise that we don't take anymore. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for coming Cheers. in Thanks this morning,